So let's dive in here and make our super complex squishy box rig. So in the model tab, let's grab a cube. Let's drag this out. We'll zero it and make it about one meter and two segments in each. That's all we need. And under edit, we're going to go center to bounding box bottom and if you hit the W key, you'll see that the center's been moved to the bottom of the box, and it's put an offset in Y. So if we set this to zero, everything's zeroed out nice and clean, and we're sitting on the origin perfectly. So now we need to add some controls. So into the Setup tab, and basically we're going to be animating the vertices to deform this box. right? But you don't want to have to go in and do this one by one, because that would be a nightmare. So we need a way, a sensible way to control a lot of points with as few controls as possible. And to do that, we're going to use transform effectors. So invert mode, select the top ones, hit transform effector, select the middle row, transform, and select the bottom row, transform. Okay, so now if you hit the O key, if you hit the O key under Active Meshes, you can turn on Weight Maps, and you'll see what's happening, how each of these groups of points is being affected by the locators. But we don't want to animate with that on, so we can turn that off. OK, so right now, if we're in our side view, this would be kind of a, a hassle to try and grab these controls. So we want something that's a bit easier to grab when we're working. So we'll select all our controls and we'll go into display mode locator shape and we're going to add some custom shapes to this to make them easier to grab and just nicer to look at so if you go to custom right out of the gate you'll get the default squares which are useful sometimes but not for our purposes right now so basically you just want to work your way down the list and kind of customize them the way you want so i'm going to replace these so that gets rid of the locators and I don't want them to be solid, and I'm going to use a circle. And I want them facing on Y, and we'll make them a little bit bigger so they're easier to grab. Okay, and if we go back to 3D items and add draw options, and we'll change the color of these under wireframe here. So select a user color, and I like something orangey. There we go. So now if we select one of these, hit the W key, you can see we've got control over that group of points. So we'll be able to set keys on this and deform the box and make some squishy animation. But before we do that, we've got to do some naming so we can find the stuff in the graph editor later. It's not so much, it's not so difficult now when we only have three curves, but if you had a whole character in here with hundreds of curves, you, you definitely want everything labeled. We'll just call this CTL top. CTL mid, and CTL bottom. OK. Another important thing we're going to want to do is so with them all selected under properties, if you go in right now, you can see this has an offset of 1, offset of 10, and these should all be zeroed out because at any time in the animation, you're going to want to go back to your original pose. If you have values here, you won't be able to. You'll just kind of have to eyeball it. So with all of these selected, we're just going to zero all. Now everything's nice and neat. All the channels all zeroed out. OK, so to move these, we're going to need a master control of some kind. So to do that, we'll need another locator. Just add one of those. We'll call this CTL main. Call it whatever you like. Some people call it a pause node for position, POS, or a transform node, or call it whatever you like. I like main because it's the main one I grabbed to move everything. So we'll go back to the display and uh, locator shape, custom again. 
I'm going to replace it with a circle. I actually do want to leave it solid this time. I'm going to scale it down. And a lot of the animation we're going to be doing is back and forth on Z, most likely through the side view for simplicity. So I want this facing on X. And if we go to our side view, it's kind of kind of difficult to grab right now, so we'll just offset this in Y just a little bit. So now it's just easier to grab. If you hit the W key, you'll still see that we are still zeroed out here. It's just easier to grab. And if you want, you could go in and you could give this a label under the display tab. So we could just call this main. See, it's not very helpful up there, but you can offset this in Y. Whoop, in Y. There we go. And I'm going to go in and give this a custom color as well. So add a draw option to the wireframe. I'm going to use an orangey kind of outside. And I'm also going to add a fill. I'll make that oh, red fill. Nice and easy to see, nice and easy to grab. OK. So if we select our box now, we can hit tab. We've got our subdivided squishy box. When you're animating, though, you don't want to have to be, you don't want this highlight to keep going. I mean, as a rule of thumb, all the geometry in your rigs should be frozen. Sorry, not frozen, unselectable when you're animating. You don't want to be setting keys here and then inadvertently select this or a finger or a joint or a piece of some piece of the mesh and key it by accident. So all your geos should be locked. So We'll hide like that. And under the assembly tab, your assembly tab might be hidden if you've got this pushed over too far. So you might have to pull this out a bit. So under the assembly tab, under select, we're just going to set this to no. And now the, the geo is safe and everyone's happy. So now we're going to go in and clean up our item list because right now it's just kind of a collection of stuff that has no real organization to it. So we'll just we'll rename our mesh box mesh and we'll group it we'll put this call it uh, I don't know geo grp and we'll take our controls and we'll group these control G controls grp So we'll take the controls, put them under the main. So now when we take the main, it pushes the controls, which pushes the rig. But then we can also, we've got our squishy box functionality here. Now when we move the main, oh, what's going on? That is called a double transform. So what happens is, if you put your geo under your main controller through parenting, obviously that will make it move. But because we're also moving the controls, it's passing that information on back onto the cube again. So for every inch forward the cube goes, it actually goes two because it's also getting the transformation from its controllers which are being moved. Hence the double transform. So to avoid this, we need to get this out of this group. So we'll put that outside and we'll take all this and we'll group it together. And we'll just call it squishy rig. So now everything's nice and neat in the item list. We can select our main and move it around. This top one, you wouldn't move the top one ever. This is just a container to kind of hold the rig in place. If you're going to position the rig anywhere in space, you'd select your main, you would move it to wherever you're doing your work, and then you'd start you'd start doing the animation over there. So we got a nice simple rig with some good functionality. We got a nice clean item list, and we're good to go. So let's start setting some keys.